Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel and to another Elden Ring video. Now Elden Ring is a really big game with a really big map and lots of things to explore. So much so that there are a bunch of hidden secrets that you probably miss as you run around the game. While searching around the map the other day, I found a place called the Four Belfries. In here are three teleporters which require three unique keys to access and they take you to secret locations around the map with unique boss fights. One of these boss fights also include the Grafted Shion that you fight right at the start of the game so you can go back there and get revenge on her after she's meant to kill you. In this video I'm going to show you how to get the three keys that you need and how to get to these locations, what they look like and what the boss fights in them entail. If you do go on to enjoy make sure you drop a like and subscribe for now though. Let's get into it. So to get to the four belfries you're gonna to have to come to the west side of Luernia here on the map. There is a point of grace all the way at the top so you may want to head up the hill completely just to secure this so you can teleport back to it later. You may have to fight some headless invisible teleporting giants on the way but they're not too tough or you could just run straight past them if you didn't want to have to fight. As you get to the four belfries you'll see the three different towers and their teleporters here down on these monuments. You will not be able to access these straight away because you need three imbued sword keys. The three keys are laid out scattered across the map with the first one actually being at the chest right at the top of the four belfries. So the first one is nice and easy for you to get. You can grab that straight away when you get to this location and you've got your first key. To get the second key you're going to have to have progressed somewhat through the story so that you have access to the Academy of Rayo Lucaria. This is located here in the center of the lake in Luernia but again if you progress through the story so you can actually access the Academy you know this location. You don't have to have killed Renata the boss here but you do have to at least progress a lot of the way through the Academy itself. By spawning in at the debate parlor site of grace within the academy you'll be able to retraverse these rooftops, follow the path round as you did and if you miss this body here in this little tower you'll be able to loot it once more and find the imbued sword key. The third sword key is actually all the way down in the southeast of the map in Kaled. Now this part of the map is a little bit tough so do make sure you're careful when traversing it if you're a slightly lower level but still want to find this imbued sword key. It is possible you just have to jump on your horse and run through most of the enemies that are going to be here. The last key is going to be in a place called Celia Town of Sorcery and is actually hidden behind a magical wall. To remove this wall you have to head to the three towers that are within this town and light them in the brazier so that you can open the gate to find this imbued sword key. The imbued sword key itself is hidden behind one of these walls at the back of the alley so you'll be able to drop the shield down and then access this to get your final key. I put a graphic on the map here so you can see where the three towers are and where you have to go to access this sword key as well. Now that you've found the three keys you can head back to the four belfries and finally access these teleporters and take you to the three hidden locations. Starting from the grace the first teleporter will take you to the chapel of anticipation and this will look familiar because this is where you started the game in once you first made your character. You die to the grafted shion that is here and get sent to the first tutorial area of the map. You are technically meant to die here to activate this but by returning you can finally get your revenge on this boss. She is a pretty tough fight so you are going to have to be careful about how you approach it. Her swings and damage and timing of the combos are really quick so you're going to have to find the exact timing or use some form of range to keep it at bay but that shield will block a lot of it. So this is a pretty tough fight. In fact all the sites here will give you tough fights but once you beat her you will be able to get the loot from her which is very very unique and you may want to have it moving forward. Once you have killed her and taken her loot there is no way of like returning back to the four belfries so you're just gonna have to teleport as normal so that you actually make it back there. Don't jump off the map and die like I did thinking it will take you back. It doesn't. You just die. So teleport back to the grace of sight at the four belfries. The second tower halfway down is going to take you to Nokron the Eternal City. Now if you played the main story you'll know this is also part of the main story. In fact there are three different locations which are technically called Nokron in this area. You have the lower half which is accessible in Mistwood. You have the upper half which is accessible once you've killed Radan and then you have this area which is only accessible by, via this four belfry tower and you just drop down there is a piece of loot here on the edge and then you have this semi boss to fight he's not technically a boss but he is a pretty tough enemy to get down and he is a fun fight which will give you a decent amount of runes. The last teleporter down the bottom of the four belfries hill is going to take you to a place called the crumbling Faram Azula. This looks like a really interesting place and I hope later on in the game you'll be able to explore this a little bit further but by following this little path down, dropping down, you'll see two enemies which will look kind of familiar because they're actually one of the early boss fights you can take in a cave in Limgrave. My recommendation when you're fighting these guys is you take the right hand most one first because they do throw these daggers at you which can do a lot of damage and stagger you causing the main one to hit you and kill you pretty easily even if you are a high level. So take the first one on the right get them down and then this the last 1v1 fight against a boss that may feel familiar to you if you remember that fight back in the caves of Limgrave. 
Once you've killed them, look over the edge and you'll be able to see you do your last final piece of loot, which you'll be able to take. And that is the three locations, the three semi-boss fights you'll be able to take, the revenge you can get on the Grafted Shion, and all the loot that is accessible from these locations within the four Belfries. Okay then guys, that takes us to the end of the video. And if you did enjoy, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, if you want to come see live Elden Ring gameplay on my playthrough, I do that over on twitch.tv slash raddargaming. So you go check me out over there. Help me with any tips that you have and get tips from me. Check out new places on the map you may not have seen before or just get an idea of what Elden Ring is like from my perspective. If you want more Elden Ring YouTube content, hidden places and guides, make sure you check out the videos here on the screen. Until next time, guys, though, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Wow, wow.